My ancestor, James Buchanan, was president prior to Abraham Lincoln. So the time was not right for him, and the energy was not the same as it was for Lincoln. So things happened very timely, I think. Uh, so it's, it's uh, just remember that today. <laughs> uh, today, I have two entities I want to bring forth for you. One is Spotted Eagle, which is a Native American. He happens to be uh, of the Nez Perez tribe up in Washington, I think is where he says he was incarnated in that particular lifetime. And he also says he hasn't been back since. Uh, so he has a little bit of a message for you. And, and then I'll, I'll bring Alexander in uh, to kind of critique what he says. Uh, not to disagree with him, but simply to explain a little bit more. Uh, so let me bring Spotted Eagle in, and I, I don't want to talk too much about what he's going to talk about because he kind of does his own thing. And uh, a lot of times when I speak too much, I kind of contaminate that. <laughs> so uh, Spotted Eagle, if you've been around any of his uh, presentations, you'll notice most of those were guided meditations. Rarely does he ever speak about strictly information, but today I, I think we're going to have him bring that forth uh, with a message. So let me bring him in. <clears throat> Welcome, my brothers and sisters. I am this that is known as Spotted Eagle. I have existed as you in, in one of these physical bodies, and it is not a bad place to be, as long as you do not forget that you're part of everything else. You're not separate, even though you are somewhat imprisoned within these physical bodies until you decide to be and do something different. So my message today is that oneness, this being a part of everything else, is part of your necessary evolvement in your spiritual path. You will not make it simply by being an individual, being separate from. If you were a Native American in a past life, and most of you have been, we have to tell you, then there is a good chance that you went on a vision quest, and that vision quest included being out in nature. I think another word for it is a walkabout in one part of your world, where you existed and depended upon the things around you. You didn't take a sack lunch, as you would say, nothing to drink. You simply existed in nature and nature took care of you. But you had to connect with, you had to be part of everything around you, or you didn't survive. So if you were my tribe or my village, then that would be part of your education. You came in with one name, and after the division quest, you were given another name that was more appropriate to what you were here to do and to be and to seek in that lifetime. And most of the time, it had something to do with an animal totem, such as an eagle or a deer or perhaps a bear. All those represent certain types of energies that you will present to yourself in that lifetime, and it is how you will evolve. But it is most interesting when you have gone through that awareness, you come away with a sense that you're part of everything else. And that is what we wish to present to you for your information, for your acknowledgement. So we would have to ask you, have you connected with everything around you? Have you touched Father Sky at night? And have you been the stars that twinkle in the heavens above? Have you connected with Mother Earth when you wake up in the morning and you are engulfed in this energy and she wipes the fog from your eyes? Have you felt those things? Have you experienced being an eagle flying high above tall trees up against the mountainside? And have you felt an updraft that carried you rapidly higher and higher? And did you cry out with the joy of that experience. That is what we mean by connecting with everything around you. And you have that ability. All you have to do is to forget who and what you are and become that. 
have you become a yellow flower that dwells below a waterfall and felt the mist on your face? See, all of those things. Mother Earth provides you with other creatures. It provides you with flowers, grass, the trees, everything that is here. You are part of Mother Nature. You are not separable. I know you speak of going to other places and distant planets, but this is who and what you are. You are on this plane with the purpose and the idea that you connect and are being one with everything. Now, a little thing that perhaps no one has told you. When you come back and incarnate into a different body, it is because you are separate. You have not identified with being everything else or you would not be so, we would say, rapidly trying to recreate that lifetime so that you can correct all your flaws and disappointments from a past life. If you are everything, there is nothing to judge yourself about being in the wrong, the wrong place at the wrong time. Because we tell you, you cannot be any place except where you're supposed to be. Now, is it not in your awareness that you are imprisoned in a sense in these bodies as long as you think that this is all there is? It is most amazing as we stand back and look and say, this one, this disconnect with everything else that had ever existed. You have been Native Americans. You have been natives and we would say early types of spiritual awareness. And it all will lead you back to this awareness that you are part of this oneness, this greatness that you are. And when you have done that, you will find that love fills your heart, that you have compassion and love and caring for everyone and everything. And you do not judge them to be inferior or superior. You are simply all of those things. So you get to stand back and look at the bigger picture. And that is what few people seem to be able to do is to see what is happening on a larger scale. So we wish for you awareness that you are part of everything that exists and you cannot separate even though you believe that you are this physical body there is more to you than that so allow yourself to touch and be that and we would say to you thank you for allowing me to enter your campground to allow me to experience what it is like and one last thing we would say to you, whether or not you are in a stained glass building or whether you're out in nature, it makes no difference. That oneness is what you're here to experience. It is part of your growth, part of your evolvement, part of who and what you are. So we would say to you, experience. It is within your dreams, within your desires, within your intent. Simply reach out and touch and be. And you may find yourself in much amazement to find that you are more than this body or to find that you can be something else. It is in your future. It is time. It is something that is going to be experienced by the most of those within your worlds. So we would say to you, we were spotted eagle. Thank you. <clears throat> um, spotted eagle usually comes through with a single feather in the back. And he says he doesn't have a headdress as such, simply because he does not recognize somebody being less or more. So he's not a chief. I think you may call him a... Uh, spiritual counselor, there's a different word for it. What is the word for? Uh... One more time? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shaman, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that uh, is what his life was all about. Sometimes when we have time, we'll tell you a little bit more about how he presents himself and 
how he got the name from Little Deer to Spotted Eagle. It's, it's quite humorous and fascinating to me, and some of you have heard that, so. Yes? Not in those words, but yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's, when he takes me on one of these ventures, it's, it's, you forget who you are. You're just eyes, or you're, you're having that experience, especially the eagle. It's, uh, one of the things that I've found about the eagle is it's, you're up so high, and you, you really get an overall view of the things that are happening. And, uh, you can hardly do that from a physical body, unless you're Superman flying or something. <laughs> OK. So let me bring Alexander in, and uh, I, I think he has something to say about this also, and we'll try to not take too much of your time. <clears throat> Greetings, we are Alexander. Most of you have been around enough to where we see you. We see your overlays and the things that you are here to do and have done and will be doing. So you are like a movie unto yourself. You are the stars of your own stage. And it is all playing out before you. Perhaps you do not have the script handy. <laughs> but trust me, it will happen for you anyway. One of the things that we wish to present to you is, is this idea of truth. Many of you, when you first start, especially as you step into this spiritual world, or this I think you call metaphysical world, you'll think, if I can only find this answer to this one question, then I will have achieved my goal and I will be evolved and perfect. I will know everything I need to know and be happy and content. But what we have to tell you is truth it's in flux. It is never set. At one time, your earth was considered flat. The earth was considered the center of the universe and the sun rotated around the earth. And now you know that that is perhaps not true in your day and time. But at one time, that was an accepted fact, a truth. So notice how things change. As you have experiences, you will change your idea of what truth is. Truth is like you are. It is changeable, always. It is never set in stone. So if you are here seeking for one final answer that will deliver you knowledge and spiritual awareness and evolvement, mastery, it is always changing. Your world today is changing. Now, there was a thing about 2012 that says this is a changing of the guard. Things will happen new. And you look around and you think, it still looks the same. But we have to tell you, there are great changes underway. Everything that happens, happens on the other side, as you would say, on the spiritual side. It is a thought, it is a creation, it is an imagining. And when it is complete, it is presented before you. Now, there are certain things that are going on that you probably are aware of. Some of them you are fearful of. You have this process, I think it's called GMO products, where they modify your foods. They're playing with your genes, and not the ones that are blue, the ones that make you who you are. You are, I want to say, in the process of possible change. You're going to find gene splicing. You're going to find that body parts are going to be grown. So your whole medical society is about to change. It is already within the works. So if you are fearful of those things, we said, would say to you that it's part of truth. It is a strange thing when you come up with a new idea or a new invention. It has both positive and negative sides. And if you only delve on the positive or on the negative, it is not complete. It is not true. So everything that comes forth like atomic energy has both negative and positive effects. It is somewhat like a human being, is it not? You both have both of those type of energies. Everyone has a 
we would say a lot of good and perhaps a little bad within them. It is part of human nature. It is part of your truths. You get to choose who and what you wish to be. So truth, recognize it. It is not one thing. It is simply a path. It is an involvement. And as you grow, and as you begin to tune in, as you begin to, we would say, sample this oneness that Spotted Eagle has spoken of, you'll find that your world begins to change. And you begin to change. The things that were true yesterday are not true for you today. What you were as a child is not true today. Santa Claus, does he exist? <laughs> you see it as a mental concept. But if you are four or five years old, and you're waiting for your first bicycle or something like that, boy, truth is Santa Claus. And the parents do everything they can to convince you that this is a real thing because they love the smile on your face, the way you light up. You remember it, yes. But as you grow older, then you put away your toys. And then you begin to have, we would say, religious or spiritual experiences. God, at one time, was thought to be this, I won't say revengeful father, that perhaps sat on the cloud and threw lightning bolts at you every time you did something wrong. That was true at one time. And then there's this gentleman that came along by the name of Jesus that changed all of that, that said to you, God is love, with kind, gentle energy. And that is much more, we would say, desirable than the other, I think. So your truth has changed from someone that you had to duck every time you said the wrong word to someone that's loving and kind and allowing. And now the third stage comes along. You're going to be presented with the idea that you are God. You are the one that's experiencing. You are God's fingers, hands, toes, mental ability. As few of those have already stepped in this. You have one that was known as Archambault, that some of you are aware of here, that had certain experiences, and he stepped beyond the idea that God is something from the past into awareness that he is that. He considers himself a mystic, and there are many others along that same line. But that is what you have in your future. You're going to be presented with the idea that you are responsible for everything that you do, all your creations, and nobody is doing it to you. The devil doesn't hide behind some dark corner. Everything you do is your creation. Sometimes that's hard to take, isn't it? Especially if you're having a difficult time here. We're going to have to take care of a running nose here, so if you'll excuse me just a minute. Sometimes the physical body leaks, does it not? <laughs> so recognize that you are in the middle of change. Third stage. Now, we have a few more minutes, so we'll present you with some other information. We like throwing out different ideas because it challenges you to prove we're wrong. <laughs> Uh, and that is most delightful because you go out of your way at times to, to say, that can't be. <clears throat> now, most of you here are what we call rainbow energies. It is a group of people, of beings, that have come in and have opened the door to all kinds of possibilities. And then you have brought in indigo energies. Next step up, perhaps, next experience. They come in, they're very intelligent, very wise, very capable but they have to be supported or they will have a tendency to self-destruct. So they will be your children, perhaps, or someone that you are aware of, that if they'd had just the right guidance, things would have been different. So you will find that they have a tendency to get involved with drugs, things that do not present the things that they could be. And yet they are intelligent enough where they could do anything and everything. They simply need support. And then the next one that comes in, and these are almost on the heels of each other, are these that we call crystalline or crystal energies. These are, we would say, superstars in effect. 
they are the Paris Hiltons. All of those that are aware of who and what they are, they know that they are gods. They can do and be and show you anything that you can imagine. You ask them if they are a god, then they will most certainly say, I am that and more. Most fascinating. Now, what you have not heard is that those of you that are rainbow energies are the fading energies on the earth. You're about to give it over to someone or something else. So are you giving it to the other energies? Or perhaps you still are in charge. There is a new group coming in and you will notice them by the red and orange energies that they are. We call them strawberry energies. And you are that. When you reincarnate, you will come back as strawberry energies. And everything that you have set in motion, you are here to complete. You will know everything and gain everything that the other energies have presented. And you will be more than that. You will be highly intelligent. But one thing that's going to happen through this process is your DNA is going to change, your bodies are going to change. They're going to be not quite so dense. You're going to have those of you that are, have athletic abilities much beyond anything you have seen or imagined. The intelligence is going to be almost to the genius level. So when you have lost someone upon this plane, do not be despondent. They either are already coming back or will be coming back. And the strange thing you're going to see is the hair color. That is a giveaway. It is going to be red or reddish. So you will recognize instantly when you have this new kid, new baby that is born, and you and your spouse have black hair and it comes in with red hair, you begin to wonder what's going on. We have to tell you it is a shift in energy and it is going to be worldwide and it is already beginning to happen. So expect exciting times. There's more happening within the last 200 years than has happened in all of your involvement up to this point. And it is just beginning. It is about to accelerate. You will be most delighted when you come in again. And you'll be most challenged also. And all of these strange energy shifts are going to be part of you. And when you have had, we would say, your DNA modified, it is something you keep with you. So it is not something you have to do every generation. It is a gift of change that you accept. And mostly where you will accept it is within the mind. You have to accept that you are gods, in effect, that you are here demonstrating and creating a new world upon this plane. And a strange thing happens too. These that you call alien beings or spacecrafts will finally feel comfortable enough where they will contact you on a public scale. Right now, they are most concerned about being around you because they do not wish to be put in cages, and that is what you would do if you had one. You would simply put them in a cage and charge in mission. And that is not what they want. They wish to welcome you as brothers and sisters, as Spotted Eagle says. So expect that. A bit of shift, yes? Now, we hear some disagreement, and that is fine. One of the things we like to do is throw something out to see if you agree or disagree. It makes us no difference because things will happen as they're going to happen anyway. But it is most delightful to pressure your truths to see how much you can accept before it happens. But these things you will know within the next lifetime. So we wish to thank you for allowing a little bit of fortune telling, a little prophecy. <laughs> uh, is it underway? Yes.
one last thing. Your population of this thing that you call Earth, this spacecraft, is about to double within the next 25 of your years. So things have to shift, they have to change. You have to be more responsible for feeding yourself. If you do nothing, if you do not, we would say adapt to solar energies, if you do not adapt to growing your own foods, eating healthy, you're going to have a difficult time. You're going to find that your supermarkets are going to charge prices for produce that most will not be able to afford. So you see, you either get it one way or the other, either by choice or by force. That is not to scare you, that is simply suggesting to you that you are responsible for creating this reality upon this plane, upon this spaceship that you call Earth, and that it is self-contained, and yet you're about to use it as a springboard to explore other places. And these other planets that rotate around you that you think are vacant simply are beyond the vibrations that your eyes are able to see. It does not mean that they are deserted. It is simply a different dimension. So you're going to be, we would say, brought into different dimensions. Uh, again, we <laughs> have challenged your beliefs. What is truth? You see, it is for you to decide. And you do it moment by moment, or incident by incident, or accident by accident. But mostly it is your intent to be open, to allow yourself to change. Once you have decided that this is truth and it is unchangeable, then the whole thing will disappear from you. And your foundation will crumble and your beliefs will be like a stack of cards in the wind. So learn to surf, we would say to you. It is a great way of being. Simply ride the waves. That is what you have agreed to be here and to do. And it is to be a most delightful time. If it doesn't work for you this lifetime, if you don't think you've quite connected, hang on. <laughs> there is more adventure coming. So we would say to you, blessings. And thank you for allowing us to challenge you just a little. It is not our idea that you believe everything we say, but what if? We are Alexander.